Amen. And when you look at the Bible, you see something different. Come on, somebody. Amen. Am I telling you the truth? Amen. 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 See, all of that, see, what's being projected to the mind will cause you to believe something that ain't true. Amen. There was an old Russian dictator that said one time, he said, a lie told often becomes the truth. If people hear a lie so much, they begin to believe the lie and think it becomes the truth. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And that's why our whole world is bewitched right now. Right. It's because all people have heard their whole life is a lie. Right. That's why the whole world is living in what you call a matrix. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So the Bible tells us here in verse number nine, it says that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Now everybody must understand here that in order to walk with God, you have to be in 100% agreement with him. Hello, somebody. Now there are too many people today talking about they're walking with God, yet they are in opposition against the word. I come to tell you here that if you're going to walk with God as Noah did, then we have to be in 100% agreement with his word. The Bible says in Amos chapter 3 verse 3, how can two walk together except they be agreed? How many know God ain't walking with you? Because in order for God to walk with you, then God has to agree with you to walk with you. But I come to tell you, God ain't walking with us. We have to learn to walk with God. Come on, somebody. And in order for us to walk with God, we have to be in 100% agreement with his word. Hello, somebody. That's just simple mathematics. How come people don't understand that? That is a simple mathematics that people need to understand in the house of God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Now, when Noah, the Bible said Noah walked with God, the Bible is simply showing you that he is in covenant. Somebody say covenant. He's, he's in covenant. And people, please understand this, that our God, and I'm talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is a Is in covenant with God. How many know 
The Bible said that Noah walked with God. Amen. That's a beautiful thing right there. Yes, sir. He walked with God. Amen. And I'm going to say it again. If we're going to walk with God, we got to be in 100% agreement Amen. with Him. Amen. Now, now, listen to this now. The Bible teaches us over in Psalms 97 and verse number 10. It says it like this. Praise God. Listen to what it says. It says, you that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints, and he delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. Now, let me share this with you. If you are in covenant with God, if you are walking with God in a blood covenant relationship, he's your father and you're his sons and daughters, praise God, then you will hate what God hates.
Amen. Because I come to tell you, the Bible teaches me in Leviticus 19 and 26, God said that if you walk contrary to me, I will walk contrary to you. See, folks, you got to really examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith, lest you be found a reprobate. Praise God. You need to really take time. Agree. Do they fellowship with 
one another? Do they have communion with one another? Absolutely not. Praise God. Well, this is the picture that, that the apostle is attempting to paint, amen, to the believers that was in Corinth. And saints need to understand that. I've seen folks who say they were saved, amen, they had more uh, of a, 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 an enthusiasm of being around unsaved folk than they did their own brothers and sisters in the Holy Ghost. Don't you think something wrong with that? Like that. But let me tell you something, it never started out like that. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, it was 
start out like that. But the apostle prophesied and told you, amen, that men among you will rise up, amen, grievous wolves, and they will speak perverse things to draw disciples after themselves. The denomination, the spirit of Absalom, it will begin to manifest among them in the church. You know why? Because people don't agree with God. How can you walk with God? And you in disagreement with him. If God say no women preachers, it's no what? Women preachers. Huh? Come on, somebody. Y'all don't like Pastor Walker now. Praise God. Whatever God says, you got to say, Amen. You got to say, So be it. Every saint should be what? When you in Christ, 
Amen. When you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, you're supposed to be what? Just. Just means righteous. 1 Corinthians 5, 21 says, we have become the righteousness of God in Christ. Come on, somebody. Amen. And then he tells us in Galatians 3, the just shall live by faith. Praise God. Noah was a just man. And then he said he was perfect in this generation. Can we be perfect? In yourself, no, you can't. But in Christ, you can. In the Holy Ghost, you can. Praise God. One scripture tells me in 1 John chapter 3 that in Christ was no sin. And if we abide in him, we sin it not. See, look at that. If we abide in him, if we walk in the spirit, you'll never sin. You keep this flesh under subjection and die every day. Let's go on to perfection. And sometimes I wonder, do they really understand what they say? Right. Glory to God. And people can't go on to perfection because it seems like they don't even know how to walk in the spirit. That's right. Amen. That's why that's why ministries are full of sin. Yes. You understand what yes. I just said? Amen. Full of sin. Amen. Praise God. Amen. These are tongue talking folk. Yes. Talking and talking to God and can't talk to you when they get through talking to God and talking. Jesus said, that which is born of flesh 
is flesh. That's being born of water. Yeah. Because every woman who, who has a baby in her stomach, that baby is surrounded by water. Right. That's why when you get ready to birth it, your water broke. That's right. okay. that's, that born of the water is simply referring to your natural birth. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be born first in the flesh, then you have to be born again after the spirit. Yeah. And that, that is not taken away from water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. But Jesus is not referring to the water in that scripture as water baptism. Yeah. Yeah. Now a lot of apostolics wouldn't like that. But you got to come back to the book. Right. 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 Nobody believes in being baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ more than me. Amen. But that breaks it down. So that which is born of flesh is flesh. Then he said, and that which is born of spirit. Talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. is spirit. Then he said, marvel not I said unto thee, you must be born again. Then he goes to the next verse and said, the wind bloweth where it listed. And you hear it, the sound thereof. Amen. You don't know where it come from. You don't know where it's going. Every, so is everyone that is what? Born of the Spirit. And everyone that's born of the Spirit, Jesus said, it's like the wind that you hear and you what? Hear the sound thereof. Right. And when a person is born of the Spirit, there's a sound that's going to give indication that they've been born of the Spirit. Amen. And that's the speaking in tongues. That's the crying out of the Father in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Give God a hand clap of praise. In Jesus' name. That was a book team. Tell your name, we don't speak with the book. You can't interpret the Bible based on your denomination. Come on, somebody. And a lot of denominations interpret that word water as being water baptism. That's not doing away with water baptism, but they ain't talking about that. Who gonna come on? Who gonna speak against the Son of God? Come on, who, who, who's a greater teacher than he is? Even Nicodemus said, we know that there are a teacher come from God. Let the teacher teach. The teacher is teaching. And the teacher said that born of the water is referring to being born of the flesh. Amen. They in water. Yeah. That baby surrounded by water. Amen. By the women's water. Oh, my water broke. <laughs> it's time to birth that baby. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. The deacon said, We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can, can do these miracles except what? Except what? God be with him. And what did Jesus say after that? Huh? What did Nicodemus say after that? What did Jesus say after that? Except the man be born again, he can't enter. No, he can't see the kingdom. Huh? Amen. And what is he talking about right there? Praise God. What is he talking about? Huh? What is he talking about? He said, except the man what? Be born again. He cannot see the kingdom. You got to go back to what he said in verse 1 and 2. We know you are a teacher what? Come from God. No man can do these what? Miracles. Miracles. Except God be with them. Jesus said, except the man be born again, he can't see the kingdom. You know why people can't see the kingdom? See, folks, let me share this with you. Some of you already know this. Praise God. Don't you know that when you're casting out devils, that's the kingdom. Jesus said, if I cast out devils with the finger of God, then the kingdom is coming to you. Amen. That's why Jesus answered him in the manner he did. Nobody will ever see the power of the kingdom until you get born again first. 
Because when you receive the Holy Ghost, now we can see the power of the kingdom in demonstration. That's why Paul said, he said, uh, my preaching was not in what? With enticing words, but in what? Demonstration of the spirit and power. How many know we can't just preach the gospel? We got to demonstrate it. We can't tell people that Jesus saves. We can't just tell them he heals and he delivers. We got to what? We got to show them the kingdom. We got to cast out them. We got to lay hands on the sick. Come on. Hello, somebody. Because until we are born again, then the power of the kingdom, we will never see it. Oh, praise God. He is ready to be prayed. Hallelujah. Noah walked with God, the Bible said. Amen. Even, I believe, Hebrews chapter 11 talks about Enoch, where it says, Enoch, he walked with God. And the Bible said before he was translated, he had this testimony that he what? Pleased God. He pleased God. How many want to please God? How many want to please God? How many want to please God? That must be our testimony. That must be our testimony. To please God. And no one will ever be able to please God until you start dealing with the main thing. Killing this flesh. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Because you'll never be able to walk in the Holy Ghost after jabbering in your tongue. Amen. And live a holy life wherein God is pleased. Satan's. 
Anyone who is not truly saved and walking with God, you are saved. That's right. That's right. Y'all like it, do you? Amen. It's the truth. Yes, it is. Because the Bible said, Jesus said, Amen. If you follow me, where I am, there will you be also. Amen. That's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Amen. That will be established upon. That's right, amen. The Bible says the, the false 
eyes upon the people. Amen. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you listen to what I'm saying to you. Amen. When you're walking with God, you ain't lying. Amen. You ain't no thief. Huh. 
God speaks, it's like thunder. Yes. Amen. Hmm? There was a time when God was speaking to his son. The Bible said he was, it was lightning and thunder. Hmm? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lightning and thunder proceeds out of his throne. That's God talking. Amen. His voice is like thunder. Yes. Huh? Yes. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. You better hear what I'm saying to you. Amen. I come to tell you here that we must walk with God. Hallelujah. And you can't walk with God after the flesh. Right. That flesh got to die. Yes. Huh? When that flesh dies, everything that's of the flesh dies out of your life. Amen. But how many know just because you died to the flesh today, you got to do it all over again tomorrow. Amen. The apostle said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, he said, I die daily. Hey, it's a daily thing, y'all. One day at a time. Worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You got to worry about today. Learn how to walk with God today. Learn how to walk in victory today. Learn how to live in deliverance today. And then when you get in the mall by his new mercy, you'll start over again.
They have no idea you're breaking covenant, man. You're breaking the covenant. See, a covenant is a contract between two or more people. Huh? When it comes to you and the Father, in Jesus' name, who reconciled us back to God, whereby we now have peace, and his judgment is no longer upon you. Huh? When you get saved, you're now in what? You're in covenant. Huh? With who? With God. Huh? You have a what? A, an agreement. A contract. Right? Who is it between? You and God. Your relationship is personal. Huh? It's between who? You and God. Come on, somebody. Satisfied. 
Hallelujah. Hell has enlarged herself and opened up her mouth without measure because so many souls keep descending into that place or will descend into that place. You understand what I'm saying here? Glory to God. We cannot be in agreement with hell. We got to be in agreement with God. And in order for you to get in agreement with God, you got to repent and begin to yield your heart to his word. Hell is not. And folks, let me tell you something. Your flesh is always going to war against you Amen. to keep you from walking in covenant with Amen. God. Amen. This is why you got to take care of the flesh. Amen. Every day you got to take care of it. Huh? Amen. It'll sneak up on you too if you ain't careful. Come on, somebody. Amen. It'll sneak up on you. For you know it. This is good. There you go. Look. Amen. Flesh. It's all in on the flesh. Amen. Flesh. And folks have no idea. You just break and cover. Yeah. When Adam sinned, what happened? Romans 5 12 says, Sin came into the world and death by sin. And death came upon every man. Because of what? Sin. Isaiah 59 1 and 2 said, It is your sin that is what? Separated. Separated you. Between you and God. That even when you pray, God will not hear you. There's no connection. Sin, sin, sin breaks up everything. See, y'all, y'all can play with sin and act like sin is no big deal. The devil's alive. Amen. The God I serve is holy. Do y'all even know what holy means? I know you know what it means, but I'm just preaching. Do you even know what holy means? Holy means to be set apart. Set apart from what? Sin. Holy also means free from sin. The Bible says.
that if we confess our sins, he's talking to saints in the scripture. He's not talking to the unbelief. He's talking to saints. He said, if he said, if you confess your sin, hmm? and these are those that if they sin. He said, if you confess your sin, huh? He is he is able to what? Cleanse us from what? All of our what? Unrighteousness. Huh? You see that clause he put in there for us? Yeah. Thank God for that little clause. And I think to the nation that we forget, this is a covenant. This is a covenant. And God put that clause in the covenant. Amen. Because you know what? He knew as saints of God, we would mess up. That's right. Amen. Because we strive. But I didn't know that we gotta get we gotta get to a place where we ain't striving no more. Been saved for 10 years and still struggling. Mm -hmm. And to make people feel good, they come up with all these excuses. Mm. That makes them feel comforted in their ungodly lifestyle. There's no excuse. Amen. When Jesus came here, when he was Jesus, stop that foolishness. That's right. Stop right. that foolishness. That's right. Because the same Jesus. Huh? God manifest in the flesh that walked here on the face of the earth. He and you now. Amen. He Amen. and you got the Holy Ghost. And the same anointing. We know he was the anointed one. But the anointed one poured out his anointing. And now the same power that he walked in, he's transferred it through us by faith. Now we can walk in what? The same power, achieve the same victory, just like the one we follow. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, bless us. See, here's the reason. Here's the problem in the church. We just don't believe we can do that. Huh? We slaves. We still slaves right here. Because we didn't been in churches growing up where y'all seem to see it all the time. It was law. And they would always tell you, well, you know, we all see it. Huh? Even as a saint, we all sin. Holiness not, was not taught according to scripture. But we were just used to seeing what? Sin. People wasn't taught they can live holy. And they can overcome sin. The Bible said Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. Well, guess what? Can't you and I? As we walk in the spirit, can we not put this flesh to death? Can we not continue to sit in the flesh, not by our own strength, but by the Spirit of the Lord? Amen. She's going to say, ain't no excuse. We got to come to an understanding here that it's not by might, nor by power. Not by our might, nor by our power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. This thing got to be done through and by the Spirit of God. in the flesh. This thing has to be done by faith. It has to be done through the Spirit of God. Yes. Huh? Amen. Because every time I said before I got saved, I couldn't do this. Right. Right. Huh? The children of Israel couldn't live, they couldn't live this either. The Bible says in Hebrews, amen, they could not because of, because of the weakness of the flesh. Yes. Yes. This flesh will never let you live home. It will never let you obey God. It will never let you do that which is right in His sight. That's why it has to die. What do you think Noah was doing in his day? Because y'all got to remember, in Noah's day, they were drinking, smoking. Y'all think drinking is something new today? You think smoking, ain't nothing new under the sun. You think smoking, folks, they were smoking weed 
and all that stuff back then. Huh, homosexuality, all that stuff, nothing new. Hey, everything you see today, folks, is nothing new. They was doing that back then. Huh? Noah saw all of that every day. Lot saw that in Sodom. Was vexing his soul from day to day. Praise God. You understand? The Nephilim was rolling the earth in the days of Noah. We're talking about 10 feet, 20 feet inch hybrid creatures. Praise God. Hallelujah. The sons of God, the fallen angels, made it with the daughters of men and produced these giants that was all over the earth during the days of Noah. And yet, with all what was going on around him, the Bible said Noah was perfect. Look at all this around us today, Sister Joseph. Sister Walker, look at all this around us today. And we just can't do it because of the influence. Well, there was many influences back in Noah's day. They were drinking, they were smoking. The Nephilim was roaming the earth. They were the fornicating, committing adultery. They was partying. You name it, mother, what we do in the day. Jesus said, well, the end time will be like Noah's day. So ain't nothing going on today that wasn't going on back then. But yet the Bible said that Noah sanctified himself. He kept himself set apart. That's why the Bible said he was just. He was perfect in his generation. You think Noah didn't have to resist the flesh? You think Noah didn't have to, amen, come against devils? Come on, somebody. You don't think he had any opposition? It was just all easy for him? I come to tell you, folks, he had to battle some stuff that we did. Yes, that's right. We do today. Amen. Yet, he overcame. And I'm going to tell you what's going to really cause you to overcome. You got to get a love for God. Yes. 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 This is what people are lacking. Right. They're, not, they're lacking the love of God. That's why it's so easy for them to love everything more than they love God. Yes. And they can just flip God off like it's nothing and gravitate to the things that they love more than they love Him. But notice people can't just flip the stuff off that they love that's contrary to the Spirit of God and gravitate to walk with Him. Hello, somebody. Uh -huh. Praise God. And this is why you can't yoke up with people that's ungodly. Huh? Oh, no, you can't. Evil communication, what happens? Communication ain't just you just talking to people. The word communication comes from the Greek word kanonia, which is where we get the word fellowship. Yeah. Have, amen. Evil communication. Amen. Ungodly fellowship. You know what it does? It corrupts good manners. Yes, right. Even the children of Israel mingled among the heathen and they learned what? Yeah. Their works. The scripture said. That's what it'll do to you. He said, what concord has Christ with Belial? Concord is fellowship. And what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. So God said, I will walk in there and I will be there. God, they shall be my sons and daughters. Be not unequally yoked together with who? Unbelievers. Isn't it amazing, Mother M, that much of the time when when, when, when saints yoke up with unbelievers, it seems like the unbeliever got more power with the yeah. devil than saints having the Holy Ghost. Amen. Something wrong. Because, because it seems like the folks in the church become easily persuaded yeah. by devils than the folks that's, that's living contrary to Christ Jesus being persuaded by you to say you're walking with them. Yeah. Something wrong with that. Amen. Hello! Am I making sense of you here? Praise God! Hallelujah! I know we got seducing spirits all over the place. Praise God! But how many know it's time to cast down every imagination? It's time to cast down every day that is in opposition against the Spirit of God. Hallelujah! It's time for you to disconnect yourself 
They hurt you. Amen. And when you die, they move on. That's right. That's right. Woe is me, woe is me, they gone. And they done moved on the next day. Yeah. And some people are saying that. Some people don't take about an hour to move on. Yeah. After you gone. Yeah. That's why you have to really take heed to your own life, people. Don't lose your soul for somebody else. When you get saved, you have an inheritance, right? You, you haven't received it yet. You gotta endure to the end to receive it, to enter into it. Don't let nobody take your crown. Don't let nobody take your crown. Hallelujah. Don't break covenant with God for a moment of pleasure. We gotta get out of, out of agreement with Him. And in, in that hell are we in agreement, the Bible says. You know, you know, people are only in agreement with hell because they live living in sin. And that's why we have to repent to break the covenant with death. And stop the death process from working in your soul. I'm talking about true repentance. And come out the sorrow of this world because you're not caught. Hello. They didn't like that, Mother did. Praise God. We talk about because you got caught. We talking about praise God. Amen. Godless sorrow. Working repentance unto salvation. People need to come under heavy conviction. Huh? Until they become godly sorrow. And godly sorrow, sorrow leads you to repent. And repentance work bring it for what? Salvation. That's the Holy Ghost. Yes. If you backslid, that's the anointing of God being restored. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Y'all listening to me. Oh, praise God. praise God. How many want to walk with God? Amen. And to walk with God, you gotta what? You gotta break covenant with death. You gotta repent. Huh? Amen. You gotta start hating what God hates. Amen. And start falling in love with the things that God loves. Amen. If God, you know, you may not fully understand certain things right away. If God says it, amen. Amen. And as you walk with Him, you, your understanding will be will come become broader. Because how I many you know you don't understand everything right off? Amen. Not everything. But as you walk with Him, you'll see. First, natural and spiritual, right? Amen. How many know some that sometimes? How many know in your life, your mother and your father told you particular things when you were small growing up? And you didn't understand it. I don't understand no why. I just don't see why I can't go. Why I can't go, Bob? You start getting a little older, a little mature, and you start looking back, and you start getting the revelation. Amen. Now I see why Mama said what she Amen. said. Amen. Some things you're going to always understand right off. Why God says and does what he says and does. Not, not right off all the time. But as you start walking with him. Exactly. And you start maturing. Yes. God will start opening up your understanding on certain things. Yes. And let you see why he said it. Amen. Amen. He's a father, y'all. Yes, He's a father. Your father ain't going to hurt you. He come to help you. He sent this son to be the savior of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. You gotta hate what God hates. Right. And love what God loves. Amen. God hates sin, y'all. He hates it. I don't care what the city. I don't care how little you try to make. Yeah. Only did a little. I haven't did as much as he did. Mm -hmm. Only did a little bit. Mm -hmm. huh? yes. All unrighteousness yes. is sin. Yes. And there is a sin that is not unto the dead. Yes. Hello. But it's still or it's alive. Yes. It's still worthy of death. Yes. Huh? You ain't justified because you didn't do as much as he did. If you ain't going to repent and come out of your sin, you might as well do as much as he did. 
Because you're still on your way to hell with your little bitty doing sin set. Come on, somebody. Come on, they can say it. Amen. Praise God. How many want to walk with God? Y'all tired of me asking y'all that. Because you'll find out sometimes people's mind change. That's right. Huh? I want to walk with them. And I understand the sacrifice that I got to make to walk with them. I got to understand the suffering that comes with it. The brokenness, the loneliness, losing family members, friends, forsaking them. Yes. To walk with them. Yeah. How many of you might have some family members turned on you? Right. To walk with God. Right. We ain't talking about the, the preacher telling you leave your family alone. No, that ain't what we talking about. You live holy, they gonna separate themselves from you. That's right. Yeah. When the Bible says come out from among them, he ain't telling you don't talk to your family members no more. That's right. Yeah, we're the people. That's right. Amen. But when we come out from among them, no, we ain't doing that stuff. We ain't doing that with y'all do. Right. We ain't coming to your Christmas dinner. No. Amen. We ain't coming to your Easter day parties. We ain't coming to your Valentine's Day dinner. Spiritual death. 
Because apart from Jesus Christ, everyone is what? They in covenant. Yeah. With debt. Huh? Amen. Anybody there say you have a debt sentence? Right. You're in covenant with debt, and in hell you are agreement. And that's why Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach, is so important. Because without him, there is no life. Amen. There is no life. That's why you have to get him in your life. Amen. Without, without him in your life, you have a covenant with death. And in and hell, you are at a creed. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Some things you don't have to suffer. Yeah. Some things you have to suffer at the mouths of the wicked. The wicked be like, girl, let your kids go out and do them as kids. See, these folks don't know nothing about God. They don't know nothing about holiness. They don't know nothing about hell. They don't know nothing about nothing. You did it when you was little. You did it. I sure did. And the stuff I did, I didn't have no, I didn't have no knowledge what I was doing. And there was some things my mom and daddy couldn't tell me. Because they didn't know. But when you come into the knowledge of the truth, you held accountable for that. For him that know what to do and do it then. To him, to her, it is a Don't kill your children just to please their flesh. Love your children. Play with your children. Let them be children. But you're to be the boundary line for them. You're to keep them within the perimeters of God's word. Uh -huh. That's right. Jesus be a fence around you. Amen. Jesus said, I will be a fence around you when their parents be a fence around their children. Amen. Yeah. You want to keep, ah, ah, ah. Y'all said, y'all had children playing in the yard. Ah, don't you get out of that yard. You better stay in this yard. Yeah. You see what you're doing? You're being a fence. That's right. Yeah. You're keeping them within the perimeters. <laughs> to keep them safe. Because yeah. they can spray out, they can spray out of the yard and get abducted by one of these pedophiles. That's right. One of these sex traffickers. Yes. yes. Amen. See what I'm talking about? That's right. See, the devil will get them. Mm -hmm. Because you let them wander out the boundaries. Yes. It's your job to keep them safe. Lord, keep my children safe. He said, I will when you do us, when you obey my word and do what I say, then that's me keeping them safe. Yes. I won't let no evil come upon them. Yes. Huh? Hello, y'all. See, sometimes we, we pray particular things and we think God is just going to come down here and do it himself. No. He said, you obey my word. When you obey my word, then I can send angels. Yeah, that's right. Amen. To uphold my word. We think we're supposed to sit back and just let God do it all. God said, no, you have an obligation. When it's a covenant, you have an obligation in the covenant. And we, we think that, uh, well, God's going to do it all. He done already did everything on his end. But we have an obligation to fulfill on our end of this covenant. And that's why we don't see the hand of God. Because we're too busy sitting back thinking God's going to do it all. God says it's a covenant. God said, I'm not going to make you obey me. That's what you're supposed to do. When he said, put away evil from among you. God said, I'm not going to do that for you. You do it. Amen. He said, put anger from you. Huh? Amen. He ain't doing that for you. Amen. Lord, take this anger from me. No, you put it away from you. Amen. What's wrong with you, You are not that deep. Huh? Amen. No, you put it away from me. That's right. Huh? Take this secret from my hand, Lord. Take this. Take this secret from my hand. No. You take it out your hand. Before you light it up. It's easy for you to flip it out your hand after you didn't smoke it off. Huh? Hello, somebody. Am I making sense up in here? And that's a good picture right there. Every window, everybody wants grace after they see it. Oh, Lord, forgive me that I did love Who's ever crying out 
of God before they do. See, they don't want grace before. Grace that will keep you from falling. They want the grace that will forgive them after they have enjoyed their flesh. It's kind of like that cigarette. They don't want to, they won't flip it before they light it and puff it. <laughs> huh? They flip it afterwards. There's things God is not going to do for you. Folks, this is a covenant. I don't understand why people don't get this. This is a covenant. Huh? Praise God. Praise God. When the Bible says don't give place to the devil. Lord, don't let the devil have his way in my life. Well, you will when you disobey and you open yourself up to him. He will. Amen. I know y'all don't like this. Praise God. God will give you the supernatural ability to keep you from falling. But God don't just give you the Holy Ghost. He give you a word too. Come on. You can have the Holy Ghost and still yield to your flesh. Romans chapter 6. Huh? Amen. Praise God. David said in Psalms 119 verse 11, His word have I what? Hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You got to get the word in your heart and you got to have some power to put your flesh under subjection so you can live out the word that God has imparted on you. But then and only then you know, when you bring forth the good fruit of the Spirit of God. Y'all understand what I'm saying here? Amen. Amen. How many know this is a covenant? Amen. It's between you and God. Jesus is the one that negotiated it through his blood. And you have an obligation just like I do. Just like in a marriage. You have an obligation. It's ain't no do what you want to do. It's an obligation, folks. Hallelujah. I can get married to Sister Walker. We in covenant. We have a marriage covenant, right? Yes. But Sister Walker can venture off doing whatever she want to do. She's breaking, I'm just saying, she's breaking covenant. Mm -hmm. Or I can do the same thing. I'm breaking covenant. Scripture says in the last day, many will become covenant breakers. One scripture said, truce breakers. Yeah. Huh? You see what I'm saying? Amen. We make all kinds of covenants. You make covenants in the world. When you sign up, uh, you bought that car, and you sign up that, you made an agreement, I'm going to pay this until it's paid off. We break that. I just had go back. You broke covenant right there. Amen. Bible said, oh, no man anything but the love of Amen. We got to keep it. Huh? And when you let the car go back, praise God, they, watch this, because they ain't breaking covenant with you, they don't still make you pay for it. Yes, right? They said, we still got a relationship. <laughs> I want my money. And a lot of times when cars get repo, they'll auction the car. And how much they auction the car off, amen, but what they sold it for, that's the part you got to pay. So a lot of times the price gets negotiated down based on what they sold it in the auction for. So a lot of times you don't end up paying what you should have paid before it got repo. Right. Right. So thank God for that clause that the law made. So now I have to pay as much as I'll be ready to pay if I still had it. Because I still owe three years on it. Now it's going to take me about a couple of months to pay, pay it off. They will be covenant breakers in the last days. Romans chapter 1. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3. They will be covenant breakers, truce breakers in the last days. Covenant means nothing to people anymore. Nothing. You don't even, come on, we don't even have relationships in the church, do we? I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of uh, stupid. Sister Josephine, for people to call themselves brothers and sisters and have no relationship with their brothers and sisters. That's right. That's right. No relationship. How you doing, mother? How you doing? And no relationship. That's right. We can, we can have, we can have, we, we, and I believe when we all in the body of Christ, we all are in covenant, not with God, but now we all have a covenant.
covenant with each other. Right. Bible says let us be perfectly joined together. We in the same body. Right. Huh? Yeah. My brain has a relationship with my big toe. It's all in the same body. Everything is connected. That's right. Amen. Huh? Amen. My eyes have a relationship with my throat. Amen. My mouth has a relationship with my heart. Everything is connected. Yeah, and saints of God should have what? Relationship with one another. That's why we must what? Fellowship. Fellowship builds relationship. I think it's a shame when people call themselves brothers and sisters and have no relationship. You, you can have relationships with another ministry and you can't even build relationships with folk because you ain't allowed to have fellowship with them. That's the truth. Yeah. That's sad, people. That is not God. Man. That's the devil in hell. Yes. All that brethren, brother, brother in you that said is like a precious ointment that was upon the head of Aaron. Right. That's true. 